You may think running a 60-foot Hatteras into the Pacific would feel something like this. Mm, not so much. Cabo San Lucas, Mexico, a bottomless cocktail that's equal parts joy and chaos. Love stories, fish stories, both tend to be a bit exaggerated in the retelling. But what about a fish story that is a love story? I was out in a nightclub in Kirkland, Washington, a nightclub called Jimmy's. It was a second floor nightclub, take the elevator up. There's a bouncer at the elevator door. I didn't know at the time, but she was dating the bouncer. She was there with her with a friend. She was celebrating her 25th birthday. It all started when Brian gave Tawny his number on a napkin. So I wrote the number on a Jimmy's bar napkin. She still has it to this day with my phone number on it. And she did call me the very next day. They got into fishing together 30 years ago and never stopped. I know there's not a lot of ladies that go out. There are some, but, there are some, uh, but not a lot. Not a lot, but I love being, I just love being out on the water. And uh, Horace is an amazing captain. Yeah, it doesn't get any better you know. than Horace, that's for sure. I, I think they're nutty as a fruitcake, but I can't imagine working for anybody else because they have a passion like no one I've ever seen before in this sport. Come on, there is no come such on. thing as lose. There is no there such no thing as not catching there's fish. Not. And if go. I had four Tawnies on the boat, I swear I could win every tournament because I've never seen anybody grind fish like this lady in my life. Cabo San Lucas, Mexico, a resort town stretching from the peak of Mount Somar down to Lover's Beach in El Arco, Cabo's signature work of natural art. Population 80,000. But it isn't just life topside that makes Cabo go. There's so much sea life, you know, the turtles, the porpoise, the whales, the just the little, you know, the man of Portuguese man of war, the, and the fish, the marlin, the striped marlin. It is, they're amazing. Sure, side scan sonar, fish finders, and first-hand knowledge are useful. But no matter where you go on Earth, the bird is your tip-off. It's the short-haired pointer on a pheasant hunt, the weather vane on a barn roof. Find the frigates, find the bait, find the fish. There's only one issue with that. Everyone has eyes. 
Right there, right there, feeder. So right over here, look at this, look right here. They're chasing, look at them, boom, Marlin. Look at them just feeding right here. Oh, come on, come, come to Papa. Wow, this is, you don't see this every day. Look at them right here. When you're fishing out there with a fleet, we actually try and run to these fish while they're still up feeding by casting off the bow, off the stern. And everybody has to work together out there. Although we're all in competition, we all want to get our fish, everybody still has to work together out there to get the fish. I have at times backed my boat up to their boat and I've actually handed them my rod because it's under their boat and then drive away to go catch the other two fish that we have and then we come back and we get the rod back. Welcome to Cabo the official destination of holy sh that is crazy Pot of porpoise, cows in feeding mode. They want what the frigates want and what the yellowfin tuna want. It's a little tougher tuna fish because you go, you know, either going to go soak baits on a bank somewhere and pray, or you go hunt for a porpoise school, which we did. We so we ran for an hour and a half. We get out there, look around. We finally found a porpoise school. It's always funny because it's like if you go to the diner and they have a little circular thing where they stick the order in and they spin it. Yeah, I get it all the time. It's okay, we want to go catch tuna now. Well, the line's in. 60 seconds, we're hooked up. There you go, sashimi! <laughs> sashimi! While we're at it, throw some dolphin into the mix. Cabo, one of the few places on Earth where these radiant pelagics are the warm-up act. Next up, nothing changes. Repeat after me. Find the birds, find the bait, find the fish.
It's a lot of sight fishing in Cabo that's kind of different from the rest of the world. Yeah, you know, I spent a lot of time in the glasses. I mean, these things get up a tail, they get up and feed. It's the most spectacular kind of fishing you can find because it's all visual. You see the thing come up, you see them come up, you see them eating. You try to get on them before they stop eating. Like I said before, find the birds, find the, and you know it by now, right? All the bait is stacked up in this one particular area. There's different ways to fish here. We are going down 100, 120 feet with a sinker and a live bait. The other way is you'll see the guys that are running, they're seeing some birds circling over bait, and then the marlin will come and feed on it, come to the server to feed on it, and they're running into that and pitching a live bait. It's better for me to pick an area where I think they're gonna be, look at the side scan sonar, look at the up and down, try and figure out where the bait is, where the fish are, mark them, and then try to set yourself up so you can drift down on them. way to start the morning. Oh, there he goes, whoo, there he goes. Not a happy camper. But he doesn't realize we're gonna let him go. I'm thinking maybe it's a female just for how feisty it is, I don't know. <laughs> I'll show my wife that, no, <laughs> This, this one's not happy at all. all Try to pick up a second fish. Sailfish running packs. So we do a little what we call the Costa Rican turn. We broke it off. Fish still got away safely. It's all good. At day's end, if there's bait to spare, share a few with Pancho the sea lion, the marina's most popular resident. <laughs> <laughs> In the morning, the live well is restocked one last time. Out of Marina Cabo San Lucas, 
past El Arco into the Pacific, the striped marlin capital of the world. Real Energy heads to the Tenaje Trough, an underwater canyon stretching between the San Jaime and Golden Gate banks. It reaches depths of 3,500 feet. They'll ball this bait up, and you know, it's just like us fat guys. You know, you put the buffet out, we're not leaving until there's no more food. The numbers of striped marlin in there here, it's just blow your mind. I mean, there's thousands and thousands of striped marlin to be able to catch that many marlin all these boats a day, release all these marlin that we catch, and you can go out the next day and still get 400 marlin. It's amazing. The striped marlin is really what put Cabo on the map. And there's different ways to fish for them. Dead bait, valley hoop, and we put a couple of surface teasers out, maybe the dredges if we feel like if it's hot, the bite's hot, you don't even need them. The marlin come in and whack, boom, you know, just feed them, boom, get them. It's, it's awesome. Oh, there we go, not happy. Oh, there he is. Nice. That's how we do it. Nice job, Gaspar. There we go. First straight marlin, huh? Nice job. After years of overfishing, these waters have rebounded thanks to no fishing zones that have been in place for decades. The fish population and the marine ecosystem as a whole has experienced a major comeback. On the way back in, we figured we'll come in, we'll get maybe one more hour of that striper fishing, but we got distracted. A pair of blue whales on their migratory journey. Blue are among the nine whale species that have been spotted here. This is why I love what I do, because I never know what I'm going to see every day. Every day it's something different if you just open your eyes and pay attention. It's an absolute plethora of sea life down here. I think Jacques Cousteau actually coined the Sea of Cortez as the world's aquarium. That was at the top of my bucket list. That was, that was number one. You can't charter that, you can't orchestrate it. It just has to happen. And I thought, there's just, you know, it was a hope, a, a dream, and it happened. It was just amazing. From here to eternity, beauty and the beast. Cabo San Lucas has all the ingredients for a classic love story, no matter what you love. We live on the boat. Part of the reason is my <laughs> lovely wife here, Tani, is not a morning person. But this way, I just leave the dock. Even though she may not be up first thing in the morning, she's still there every day, so that's what makes it special for me. 